Oh, my cheeky, my cheek. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, February 25th, 2024. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Daughter 5. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Now, family size. <laughs> as you wish. Uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of 1,100 of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And we'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. And we have a guest with us. Want to introduce yourself there? Hello. Uh, going by River Song for the moment. Yeah. Okay. Welcome Been to the show. For a while, and yeah, I know y'all. And used to go to the ASK when it was uh, more in the past, but try to go when I can. Very short out. Yeah, pre-COVID when it was very active. Longtime friend, Riv. Uh, Riv mm-hmm. River Song on the show one of the first people i met when i was at yeah. Knoxville. so yeah, welcome uh, yeah. So and, and i'm gonna say go ahead oh okay yeah i remember ty uh dr ty you said what's your favorite anime and i'm like yeah where do i start yeah that's the right <laughs> question that's the right <laughs> question so like you throw that out and if you get a quick answer you know that person isn't as into anime as you <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. basically you're yeah. like well that's what, a what category? conversation yeah like what genre what brand which year which decade which style like now we yeah. have to talk about it like his rayra era or like what it's like oh this guy's into it this guy's into it the same thing would happen to me if someone were to ask me like what's your favorite smash mouth song because now we have to like sit down and talk about the orange album versus their intro astro lounge the the, the states the, you have to hit the right moment you have to be in the right head or, or like Nightwish, wish like which <clears throat> which singer was the tarja to win in was it uh is it uh uh flow is it you know right yeah. or in my generation the beatles which years were the best beetle years there you go yeah. exactly right yes. like if you love something you've categorized something <laughs> <laughs> okay uh guys i wanted to do just a quick roundup larry you've been playing some video games tell me about it Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I've been playing all kinds of games. Uh, Battlefield 3 and 4. Um, well, you got a PC. S- space games and you know, all kinds of things. Uh, what was it? Uh, Star Citizen. Uh, Star lately, Citizen. Wow. Yeah, that's, okay. that's a pretty good game. It's still yeah, buggy, it but it's a good game. Uh, but lately, I've been playing, uh, what is it? S- Sniper Elite 5. Okay. And it's a lot like Elite Wolfenstein. Sniper 5? Yeah. Uh, thank you. It's uh, a lot like uh, Wolfenstein. Of course, there's a lot more sniping to it. Sure. Uh, Wolfenstein didn't have that much sniping in it. But it, it, it's it, all good. Well done. It's a good game. And for fans of the show, that's where you can shoot a bullet and then the camera goes off of your viewfinder to follow the bullet. Yeah. S- slow motion <laughs> as it tumbles through space and oftentimes deliberately hits a person in their genital region because that's like the <laughs> places to shoot people in. Yeah, I turned off all the graphic cam. I don't, I don't care for that. <laughs> okay. Um, for, as for me, uh, I had the privilege of uh, selling my old car and moving on with that state of my life. I've now transitioned more or less into my new car now. Uh, Larry, I don't even know if I've shown you pictures of the new car. Um, yeah, I think you have. Okay, okay. Uh-huh. It's it's literally this color. It's literally uh-huh. this color. For friends and yeah. for radio listeners, it's like a neon yellow. And I can tell you this. Um, if you're going to, if you're, uh, my, here's my mindset. If I was going to spend as much money as I did on my car, I want people to notice it. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, mean, it's consistent. It is, it is, right? Like, like but, a yellow marker. You could get Highlighter. a Corvette, and if it's black, <laughs> no one's going to tell us, like, oh, maybe? Yeah, where is it in the parking lot? I can't see it. Yeah, but when my car it. pulls up in the parking lot, you're like, oh, I saw you from four miles away. Like, I don't know exactly where you are. Yeah, I had put on my alibi. sunglasses. <laughs> right, right, right. I have the perfect alibi car, because, like, the cops mm-hmm. were like, 
where were you at 4 30 on tuesday of last week from last month and what was less like just ask anybody everybody knows exactly <laughs> where i am now like they all know, mm-hmm. they all know. just like i was like oh okay yeah, yeah yeah we don't have to knock on tyrone's door he's the weird neon yellow car guy but also the other value behind this and something that i did put a lot of th- thought into is safety I care a lot about safety, particularly in my role as a laboratory manager. And I want to make sure that well, if I'm on the road, the one of the best protections that I can have is to be visible, right? Mm-hmm. And how many white cars are on the road right now? How many red cars, blue cars, gray yeah. cars? Red, like, yeah, white is supposedly the most popular color. It's like one big American flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you fly out. When you yeah. stand out, people see you. When they see you, they notice you. And when they notice you, maybe they won't run into you as often. And I think right. that that's something mm-hmm. to be said. Um, yeah. Overall, though, really, really happy with it. I haven't had a new car in the last 10 years. I'm inundated with all the new technology that comes with vehicles. I kind of feel that it's a bit overkill. There's this, there's these features that I have in my car that will automatically keep me in the center of the lane. So I'll drive and my yeah. steering is like, no, yeah. no. No, you want to like this. It's like you're driving with like a, a a co someone in the passenger seat with their wheel on the handle and being like, you should really do it like this. I'm like, could you not <laughs> do that while I'm driving right now? It's like, well, I'm doing it better than you. It's like, okay, fair, fair, fair enough. Uh, it does another thing where it can read. So it's another button you can click where it will read the speed limit signs and match the speed. And, and then it does a third tier where it will literally just drive it'll turn right or left for you it will know where where you want to go and it, instead of just keeping you in the center lane it'll just literally just follow the road and do the curves for you so basically in some weird cases you could literally just push down on the gas pedal it doesn't matter how much force you're putting it on and the car will just deliver you to where you need to be at and it's terrifying because i know some millennial kid or like some late late generation kid is like i'm doing that that's awesome Whereas for I see, when I see that I'm like even when I reverse I want to see behind me I want, <laughs> even with the cameras yeah. I'm like no I don't trust yeah. you I don't <laughs> trust you technology you've gone a little bit too far uh, Riv uh, not to put you on the spot but I see that you got like a Tesla hat what do you think about like electric cars in general Yeah oh uh, I mean yeah I was skeptical at first or more I was more worried at first in terms of well you know. How will mileage anxiety, all, all, all those good on the list. I went through all that and I've had it for about two years now. Nice. And, uh, and I'm quite used to it. Um, it's a paradigm of, you know, thinking we're used to certain things. So it takes yes. a little while to, to, to rewire the, you know, those kind of instincts. Absolutely. And, you know, staying in the lane, doing the driving, it, it, it increasingly does it better than I do. It never breaks it never is distracted it's always watching the road mm. but that so seems counterintuitive to, right you know but yeah it's just it's getting better and better and um so i mean we can get on a list if <laughs> hours to talk about it but i'm fully on board with with the ev transition and you know uh the sooner the better mm. yeah i was listening i listened to a lot of ai videos on youtube about what's coming and yeah. I, I, an interesting quote that i heard yesterday was in the in in about a decade or so anything that moves will have ai controlling it and i don't know about that <laughs> especially i mean i can't imagine just having it read the speed signs and making my car go that slow yes <laughs> not, not that i speed, I, I speed or larry, anything <laughs> larry played his hand a little bit he's just like i want to do 100 <laughs> school zones don't tell me to go 35 no, that's a little too much control, I think. It's a little, it, what yeah. I have problem is not so much the control, it's more of like letting it go, right? It's right. letting go of the control. So you can do something else. You can read a comic book or something. No, I'm still going to pay attention <laughs> to the road. Though I have said this, I had said this, I don't like driving because I kind of find it driving as a boring experience, particularly if you have like an hour or two hour drive. It's right. basically mm-hmm. watching a very boring TV show where if you blink or look away too long, you'll die. That's how driving has always been. And so like, you're just there and you're focused on the road and your whole motivation is to yeah. get where you're to be, but your real motivation it's, is not to die. Especially at night. Oh when you're on yeah. The, on the interstate with no yes. street lights. And, oh, oh yes. Especially on Tennessee roads, Tennessee roads right. in particular. Yeah. Yeah. You got everyone in like 
listen to us in Indiana, California. They're like, what are you talking about? Driving at night is even easier than the daytime. It's like, not in Tennessee, not in Tennessee. Wait until you hit those huge potholes you never saw coming. Wait until you saw those weird interstates that literally loop around backwards because they just put in so many different weird stuff. They try out a lot of stuff in the state that that doesn't get popular everywhere else, but. Well, you know, I, I predict that in time, like much like we have bumper cars now, yeah. I predict oh, in time, all driving will just be essentially, I mean, we, we, when you get to the point that something replaces something else yeah. and it's better, faster, cheaper, safer, yada, 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 it'll mm-hmm. become a moral, you know, problem if you mm-hmm. do something outside of that. So I think it'll get to the point to where bumper cars, as we use them now, will be a designated area to go drive things without as much guardrails and all other driving on the highways and so on will just be automated. So, yeah. River Song, it's time. interesting you say that because in my town, in the town of Columbia, there is a lane for horse and buggies still. Hmm. Because we have I Amish like that. people. They have Amish people. That I, so I don't quite like that because taxpayers paid for that road and the Amish hmm. people did not. And I say, if you are that hard pressed to have a horse on our road that poops on our roads and we <laughs> as taxpayers have to clean that up and build extra roads for you, but you're not contributing whatsoever to our property taxes. That's a good point. Our community. You well, can drive, drive, walk on the sidewalk. We got grass. Use that. The, the other side of that topic is there. They are a tourist attraction. They are. They are bringing oh, money into the state. Oh, are they indirectly? Because anything could be a yeah. tourist attraction, man. Like that, right? Right. And it's not. Is can it, be a slippery slope. Yeah. 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 And yeah. is it worth all the unreported sex abuse to have that as a tourist attraction? Like <laughs> decide, like we don't like. Well, I, I'm not saying I agree with it, but it's just a <laughs> can be an pies, argument. <laughs> yeah, are apple pies really that good? <laughs> can we at least recognize, like, these people are kind of trapped in this community, and we're using them as a fishbowl? That's kind of yeah. messed up. I didn't say, uh, uh, speaking of things that I like, though, speaking of things that I don't like, I was reading about this guy called Jesus Christ, who sounds like a pretty cool dude. Yeah, I hear he has a book out. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, haven't gone, I haven't gone to it. I'm sure I'm sure it'll be popular someday. But uh, It's been translated like a billion times, though, hasn't it? Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's the value of Amazon library books. You just hit, you know, your Kindle, translate to Russian, it'll be in Russian. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. The great thing is, though, I actually kind of find some things about this Jesus dude that I actually like. And as fellow non-believers in the Christian faith, I thought maybe we could uh, present some of these things. I present some. Oh, of these yeah. Things. He said some really good stuff. And you let me know, hey, if this is actually something you like. And then we look back at that list and see, <laughs> was any of that religiously motivated? Well, you know, or you, know what Tom Jeff- you know what Thomas Jefferson did? Have slaves? Besides that. <laughs> he, he, uh, with the bible i mean he, he took all the stuff that jesus said and put him in a, a, a book yeah and took all the magic stuff and all the old testament and all this stuff and threw it out the window ah uh, sure, uh, sure, I, sure i'm agreement with that because he said a lot of stuff that i could get behind mm. but uh the the old testament yeah. you know the the hell and the afterlife things like that and the magic tricks nah, sure, sure, sure. not so much but what could uh, we get behind all right, so let's talk about some things that Jesus did that atheists can get behind. And first and foremost on this list, I said traveled. And the thing that I love about traveling is, and Riv, you could, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, there's this thing that I like to refer to as societal, societal pressure. And you're born into it. You don't realize it, but you don't choose your own name. Your parents choose your name. You don't choose the foods that you like. Your parents give you the food that you like. You don't choose the rules that you are governed by. That's dictated by the society that you're born in. Your thoughts, your geopolitical points of view, like are all locked to your geopolitical location. The TV shows you watch, the language Mm -hmm. you speak, the language you speak in. It's all dictated by the place that you're in. And when you travel, a beautiful thing happens. That pressure goes away and you start to recognize that every other place has its own different kinds of pressures, its own kind of different cookie cutter. And what you thought was your boundaries were in fact not your boundaries at all. And it it doesn't necessarily change who you are, but it does give you a different perspective where you can realize, oh, I had other options and that there are other kinds of cultures here that have different values, different rules, different mindsets. And the ones that I had were just in were not part of my true identity, but just the ones that I was born into. 
And now I get to kind of pick and choose and sort of realize, okay, if that's the case, then what is my favorite food? Truly? What's my, what truly is my favorite kind of genre of music? Because now I'm not just right. no. in the basket of things that I was handed. Yeah. Larry, you've been around. So some, oh, go ahead. I was, really quickly, I was going to say, what you described, the mm. thing that just came to mind was the information availability bias. Oh, and I love that. Go it, it's, it's, it. The fact that we live in a Google bubble or a religious bubble or a social bubble. Yeah. That, yeah, I mean, that keeps keeps us from accessing certain information. Yep. Well, and, and zooming out, just to, I mean, even from that, mm. we, we can only ever reason with what we're aware of how we can reason. We can only do with what information that we are aware of. Right. So every single thing we can possibly comprehend is limited by what we're aware of. Mm. And, you know, so that has a lot of implications in life. <laughs> it does. Not only that, but like your your framework of who you are as a person, like just by virtue of the color of your skin or like what 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 pair of genitals you have or which you don't lack or if you have a beard or don't be have a beard, if you're wearing a blue hat in certain places of America versus a red hat, it can dictate how people treat you. Or red plaid people. versus blue plaid. In red plaid cities. versus blue plaid yeah, and so many and different cities. things. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now, I thought when I, so I was born and raised military, so we moved around a lot, but I spent a lot of time in California where being black was a unique thing. Like we we're oftentimes the only black family in the towns that we lived in. And then when I moved to Georgia, I remember startled recognition that one, um, everybody didn't automatically know my name when I introduced myself, like they would forget it. And two, I looked more or less like everybody else when I moved to Georgia. And three, that people who are black who weren't my mom also drove cars. Because <laughs> when I look at traffic, I'm like, there are other black people in those cars driving. It's like, oh my gosh, I've only ever seen my mom drive. Wow. The mm -hmm. only black I've ever seen a black person drive a car was my mom. And like, I realized this, like when I got to Atlanta, like there's a lot of things I have just taken for granted that I've never seen before. So Riv, that information bias is like, I, you don't realize what you don't know until you, <laughs> rel until you have that as information that you don't know, but you get that information from traveling. Like you get the information mm -hmm. from like, being pulled out of one location and having to make new friends and understand new uh, practices. Larry, was there any benefits that you got from traveling that you'd like to throw out? Um, <clears throat> nothing really comes to mind, but I did. I was thinking about what you were talking about, how your environment shapes your expectations. Mm. Um, I, and I'm sure I could come back to this travel um, experience thing in a minute. But right now, <clears throat> one thing that happened, I got out of high school and went into the Navy immediately the next week. And uh, I was in the boot, in boot camp for three months. Whoa. And when I came home, uh, I was I went downtown and I saw somebody in a wheelchair. And it just struck me that I had been isolated for three months, so much so that I didn't think of people outside of, you know, 18 to 22 uh, group uh people that are uh, well and fit and in, right. serving in the military Absolutely. and that, you know, it, it just, it, it left my consciousness over the cat pet casts or the, the three months that I was in there. And it was shocking when I got back out. I, it just took me a minute to reacclimate, but still at the same time. Larry, that's such a great experience. I'm so glad you had that same one too. Cause when I was in grad school, I remember going to a grocery store that wasn't on college campus. It was like a legitimate, a legitimate city, grocery store and i walked in and anybody who was older than me i immediately thought oh they must be a professor they must be a teacher or something like that because anyone who was older than me at school was staff or some sort of like you know faculty and mm -hmm. and, and the mm -hmm. other thing that shocked me was people much younger than me children and in my mind i was like man it's been at least two and a half years since i've seen <laughs> a kid I'm uh -huh. so glad people are still making babies because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the only thing in my yeah. head was just like science and books and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it warped your perspective and it doesn't take thought. Larry, you didn't realize when that transition in your mind no. was happening. Mm -hmm. it, was it was gradual was always... over time. Exactly. It's sort of yeah. like that frog in the uh, pot of water as it gets hotter. They don't realize it until, you know, it's yeah. too late. Yeah. Riff, you also had an opportunity to travel. Would you mind throwing some like uh, perspective paradigm shifting things that happened to you oh yeah i mean uh just to pick a one of a lot here finally lately i've been getting around to it in the past several years i've just been 
put off and everything. Uh, when it's a really quickly though, uh, Larry and relating the same thing, going through basic, uh, and then you know, especially going through, you know, a lot of it's, a lot of stuff's classified to a point, but you know, up in Sierra School up in Washington, you go through that, you become completely immersed in it, mm-hmm. and then you just you become convinced that you're there, and it's just it's a transformative, um, yeah. So yeah, it, uh, can you imagine be, spending decades in a church? Where they wouldn't let you access the internet or watch cartoons or or any of that, and then uh, eventually lose your faith and then be exposed to all of that all at once, um, it, it can be life changing. It is life changing. What is what are they called again? The 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 luddites, the Mennonites, uh, the eight Mennonites. No, the people no, who are no, on the no. horse and buggies. I had the word in my head. The the Mor- no, not the Mormons. Come on. Did they do some voodoo on us? The people who don't have technology, who are very religious, and they live in America. Come on, you guys know this. Reli- the Pennsylvania yeah. Dutch. Uh, no, it's not a com- It's not a complex word. We were just literally talking about it earlier in the show. What is the name of the people who don't use technology? Everything and they're super religious. They're in Tennessee. Quakers. No, Quakers. dude. Not the Quakers. Oh my god. The one you mentioned earlier from the, the one I literally the, the word I literally said just like at the beginning top of the show. People, keep talking. Now we. Have, I don't know why we had three brain farts at the same time, guys. <laughs> well, I've work. always had a problem with names. Technology, religion. Amish, Mennonites. Amish, um, the Amish, Amish people. Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. Great minds. Because now I always think of Weird Al Yankovic in that remix of the song, my preferred yeah. version of it. But yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. But it. But yeah. Are, in terms of, go ahead. I'm just saying their culture shock because they have an opportunity, a false opportunity, truly to explore the world but their mindset has been so ingrained in that lifestyle that when they see what other people are doing and they don't have the proper context for it a lot of them are scared and move back even the ones who want to leave don't have an opportunity to because they have no support structure some of the women don't even have social security numbers like they or or education you know like a lot of them can't even read properly or compete in a world where capitalistically you have to have skills to be able to support yourself you know like, mm-hmm. how does someone who was raised in that way where they've only made three-legged peg chairs their entire life up into their 20s and realize, you know what? I don't want to keep doing this for the next 80 years of my life. Is there other options? Yeah, but you're not equipped for it. You don't, you don't, you don't know anything. And we no one wants to truly invest that much time to teach you to get back up. We don't have a program for that. Unfortunately, you're well, we do have, do have a group for it, though. It's called Recovering from Religion. We can do that, but we can't teach them yeah. skills to like be functional well, in a workplace, right? The uh, the another group, for, <laughs> but it's for clergy only. If mm-hmm. you're a clergyman and you find just the stuff that you've lost your your beliefs, you know, supernatural beliefs, then you can go to clergyproject.org, and mm-hmm. they will uh, enroll you in their their classes. To give you skills uh, okay. that you can use in uh, in in sectarian life, I'll put it that way. Okay, Just secular life. And for the clergy, I think that's actually pretty good because you already have your foot in modern day, right? Like mm-hmm. you, you haven't closed yourself off to it, which I find is harmful. But I also think that yes, if you can sell false hope on a weekly basis, you can sell a car. <laughs> <laughs> if you Here, can write a sermon, you can write an article. You can write or, an article. Uh, you could be yeah. a really good writer. There's a lot of skills that are very yeah. easy. To and if you can organize your your religious group, then you can organize a lot of them. Organizations. Yeah, like you can be a, a marathon runner, five k organizer. There's right. so many really mm-hmm. good opportunities right. for you. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not not completely hopeless. We are. What do you think, Larry? Do we have enough time for one more? Or should we go to a break? No, go for it. We still have five minutes before we need to take a break. All right. So my main takeaway is Jesus. You traveled a lot. I think one thing we can take away that from at least from an atheist perspective is it's very valuable for a person's mindset, their personal growth, their well-being, to see how other people live around the world. Not just on a TV screen, not just on their iPhone, not just from what their parents or their friends tell them or what's dangerous, but to actually pick themselves up and move to a new place and settle down for a bit. Not to visit, but to like live there for a period of time. Not just an airport trip, but to actually like have a home that they stay there, that they feel good sleeping in, that they have a bed that they routinely return to night after night, and that they ingrain themselves in the culture. They try to learn maybe some new language there at that point. Try to eat some new food. 
get in that biome, have sick, have Swedish people sneeze on you and be like, whoa, I've never been sick like this before. What's going on? It's like, uh-huh. yeah, that's a Swedish cold. That's going on in America. You're like, whoa, I want you to look at a map and realize that America is not always in the center of that map every single time. Mm-hmm. Like when you look at a map, and it's the Swedish map, and there's it, America's not even on it. And you're like, why is why is your map wrong? It's like <laughs> we don't make maps for you. Everything's not for you. It's like, oh man, this is so weird. I've always mm. taken things for granted. Go into a grocery store and see the American aisle, and you'd be like, that's not what we eat. <laughs> yeah. What's so, funny is, uh, let's say that you're in, uh, oh, I don't know, Hawaii. Yeah, and and you got a, a a globe sitting there on your desk with just mm. Y pointing towards you. You yeah. don't say anything, hardly. Right. Y and water, <laughs> the entire right. side of the globe is just water. Right. But not only is is traveling educational and, and teaches you appreciation for other cultures and other um, teachings, teaches you tolerance. Yes. You know that that you don't have. Uh, to be offended by things that pe- other people do, right? Uh, it, it's uh, it's educational in that, in that sense as well. It teaches you to be kind to other travelers right. who come to you. Oh, one one thing, it, and when I talk about traveling, mm-hmm. I was in the Mediterranean on my ship, my oh. USS Barry, in the middle of the t- Mediterranean. I spent six weeks over there one time, and there are a lot of ships there. I mean, it's not just American. Talk about tolerance and appreciation for uh, different areas of the world. You can see uh, ships from any country in the entire area, the Mediterranean area, and Russia, which was interesting for me because I was standing outside the skin of the ship. I was standing on a, a walkway in line to go to Chow. To eat okay. And all of a sudden, boom, a Russian jet had um, buzzed the ship faster than the speed of sound and hit, hit us with the, the uh, sound wave. The sonic boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Russian uh, jets yeah, are super sick, by yeah, the way. Su thirty sevens, Su forty. It was they're, something. They're sick. But at the same time, when you get close enough to a Russian ship, the sailors, uh, and this happened to me, I looked over at the sailors. They were we were yelling at each other. Okay. One of them held up a can of uh, Pepsi. Says Pepsi. <laughs> 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 so you know they're just people too. Right, you, right, you know, right, right, yeah, right, 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 right. It's funny. Uh, Riv, anything you would like to add before we head out to a break? Uh, well, in context to that as well, it just reminds me of my grandpa would talk about how when he he was in Vietnam, he had he had heard things. Uh, the stories passed around. One of them was the darker side for the POW. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the cultural things that made their way even into the you know. Uh, you know, the cells over there were uh, on the sour sh- shower cells, there'd be a little circle that drawn out around it and said, smile, you're in candid camera. Mm-hmm. <laughs> little like things that. like that just to make the days go by, you know, and then mm-hmm. yeah, there's a bunch of little anecdotes, but uh, um, yeah, Japan, Alaska, saw the Ouroboros Alice. Oh, look um, at you, def- fancy. Cool. Yeah, definitely worth going. Uh, negative 30 degrees, you know, hands freeze after about 30 seconds outside. You got to take your pictures really quickly. And then, sure. Uh, so that's um, your own picture. Then, that's not a Zoom background. That's, no, your, no, that's my, own, it's my own picture. Look at yeah. you. You got to tell people that or else they're going to be like, oh, he, why is a Zoom background not moving? Is oh, that yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I should have. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, it's an interesting thing. You go inside a year-round China hot springs. This off off the grid, entirely geothermal powered. Um, you you go inside a uh, um, you warm up inside a twenty-five degree room. It's it's funny. Well, cool. <laughs> nice. It's time we take a break. Uh, it's the bottom of the hour. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio one hundred three point nine LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter 5, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPF. I'm here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002, on our 22nd year now, and have over 1,100 members. 
we have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday at the um, in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. You can find us online also at Facebook, meetup.com, or our personal website there, our, our own website, knoxvilleatheist.org. Or you can just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do an, a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start, start one. one. That's Let's right. Go. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? I want to start this new segment called Weird Things My Car Does that I'm still getting used to because we're going <laughs> into the AI apocalypse pretty soon. Uh, one of the cool things that it does that I think it's cool but also terrifies me is that there's a lady voice that comes in. And I don't have anything wrong with lady voices. It's just when they're disembodied lady voices that just start talking up out of nowhere. That <laughs> and so yeah. when the I got my car dropped off to me from Ohio because I bought it online. And they're a very good dealership. They They threw in the delivery charge as well. Guy dropped it off said bye his name was walt he can knock on my door he's like are you the guy that bought this car i was like yeah that's my car he's like great it's right there i got my pursuit car i'll see you later and he got his car and he walked away and i was like okay what I... about the keys well no he, <laughs> the keys were already in the trunk the registration was already in the dashboard but i oh, had cool. this vehicle that i had no idea even how to start and i thought okay you you put the key in the ignition you turn it and you put the key and you go it's like there was no ignition hole and i'm like i've seen this on youtube you just push the button and it says push to start and i pushed the start and it start it it turned on but it didn't like the engine cranked on i'm like how do you make this car move and i'm like Walt, what do you did you do i don't know the rules <laughs> and then all, and i turned off the car i turned it on again and i turned it off and i turned it on and then like heaven talking behind, above <laughs> me was like you should push down on the brake to be able to start the vehicle. And I was oh, like, really? Oh, a la this a lady's voice? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, really? So like, if you do something wrong enough times, instead of just a little alarm being like, bing, 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 and like some yeah. icon. Oh, that's you great. Have a voice just be like, actually, you can't drive. Your, your passenger door is open. I'm like, oh, Thank you, disembodied angel in my car that like, speaks to me. I appreciate it. I'm yeah. glad I'm I'm glad other people can hear that because I thought I was going crazy for a second. But cool. it's <laughs> me on so many different occasions where it's not just a generic message. It's more of like a actually this is going on right now. You need to do this. And as long as it doesn't get more disappointed in its tone, I'm totally for it. So as long as it just keeps starts getting an there, edge on that like, voice, I already told you, you got to push the gas pedal down. You can't, your emergency brakes on. You can't go into reverse yeah. mode. What's yeah. going on? Like, we've done yeah. this. Or, Ty, or as long Ty, I've told you this twice. Yeah, or it says, I'm sorry, Ty. I can't let you do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, like, take me to the, the Mongolian girls. Like, we can't go there today. It's like, what do you mean? It's like, well, it's closed. I'm like, oh, thank you for knowing that. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, we got a listener comment. This is from a way back, way back, way back um, episode that we did on spanking or basically how to rearing parents and how would God react as a parent who reared. And so um, we gave God a very overall poor ranking as a parent because he didn't do a good job, you know, nailing your firstborn son on a cross for rules that you made puts it down on the list, you know, but we compare that to spanking and we basically said like, you know, spanking is already contentious a topic as it is. Nailing your kid to a cross, that's like probably the worst thing you do. But anyway, um, the comment that we got came from Rick OZ3CQ, who says people who still defend spanking now would say, I don't do it out of anger or I talk first and then I do it in a calm and loving way as a last resort. Isn't that sad? Um Riv, Larry, what do you think? Uh, hot topic, but I would love to hear from you guys. What do you think about spanking your kids? <laughs> if you were to well, have... I, I'm an unmarried marriage counselor, and, that, and that, I've never had kids. Okay. Uh, never changed a diaper. Uh, mm, okay, uh, but, okay. I mean, from an intellectual level, mm. uh, I think it's bad. I think that it would teach your kids to distrust you. Mm. that they would, should not feel comfortable or around you because at any time you could smack them or something. I, I'd, and it's, I just think it's a bad idea overall. However, I'm not a psychologist either, so I, I don't know uh, what I would do with a misbehaving kid if they were extremely stubborn and wouldn't do what I wanted to do. Mm. Riv, what do you think? 
Yeah, I just kind of follow on that. And again, I'm not a specialist, but I've, you know, read things over the years. I'm very loose on it, but I do remember coming across, you know, uh, new and, you know, kind of gone back on verified studies that uh, it's just, it, it instills bad relationship between the parent and, and, the, and the child and long term you know you might deal with things we all how it goes we all uh grow up watching violent cartoons some of us do and mm -hmm. we can say oh that had, didn't have any you know long lasting effects or anything uh, but there's also kind of a disconnection there between a cartoon and being yeah. physically you know you know that can have a lot of emotional you know so mm -hmm. it, it's just I, I get it. It's a, it's a generational thing that's hopefully changing over time, but we have more studies showing the long-term impacts and yeah. showing there are better ways to do things. So, yeah. Sure. I, I always think it's the sort of thing that can get quickly out of hand if you do it in a point of anger, right? And then right. if you're not doing it in a point of anger, why are you doing it at all, right? Like, in my mind, there are times when I will go to Burger King and I'll bring back a whole bunch of burgers because I could do the family deal because that's the only way you should buy burgers. I worked at Burger King. I can tell you that's the best deal. Uh -huh. Three Whoppers, three small cheeseburgers, three fries for like 17 bucks. Like that's insane. You should totally get the family deal. Don't throw away those coupons, people. But I'll bring it home and I'll leave it down on my couch. And then I'll go out because I probably forgot an extra bag of something. And by the time I get back to my home, I realize, oh, that's right. I have a cat. Why have I done this? I'm a terrible fool. And that's happened time and time again. And I come back and Vinny, my cat, will, and I've and I, since I said his name, he's probably going to come in pretty soon, but he will come <laughs> in, rip up on the first hamburger, tear it all around the floor, smear it all around the carpet, and I'll say, like, I should have known better because I'm the, I'm the adult. I'm the human, right? But before I used to get so angry when he did that, the first time for sure, that I picked him up and I put him in the closet and I closed the lights and I said, you're in timeout. And I said to myself, like, man, he's not going to know what I'm doing. Like, no. this, has, this is going to have no impact. <laughs> And I'm I'm largely just putting you away from me so I can clean up the mess in anger so I can cool down, but I'm not going to take it out on an animal that has no idea of the arbitrary rules that I set up for him. Like I at best yeah. have to just maintain my lifestyle so that I can live with a cat because I bought the mm -hmm. cat, you brought him here. If I didn't want that to happen, I would get a goldfish. So if you don't have a, in my mindset, if you, if you want to have a disciplined kid that's going to take more effort than just beating them when they break your rules it's going to take better forms of communication in my mind and if you didn't want to do that you should have got a dog or something like a mr potato head that you can like whack or throw against the wall because a, a child is a person you know that's depending on you to to care for it support it, and love it and there are better ways to do it compared to what you mm -hmm. went through and one of the things my mom never did was beat me or or my sister because specifically she had been beaten and when we asked her, why don't you spank us? She's like, because I've been spanked and I don't like it. And I know that hurts. And so I'm not going to do that to you. And I thought, what a wonderful lady. What's up, Blake? <laughs> and also, we, we got to remember, there's two sides to this. It's not just punishment. There's reward. Mm, uh, yeah. And a lot of times it, it's better to, to give reward in the direction that you want the actions to proceed mm. rather than just constantly think of punishment. Mm. Yeah. And there are more motivating factors to do something right than just fear of punishment, which in a religious sense feels like that makes sense. But in an actual practical sense, character is determined by what you think, what you do when you think no one's watching you. Right. right? And yeah. I like to consider myself a person of high character where if no one was watching me, I'm not going to steal things. I'm not going to litter things. I'm still going to pick up trash if I see it. I'm, I, I'm not going to make a mess. I'm going to leave places better than I left it, but I'm not doing that to broadcast how good I am. I'm just doing it because I have a per I'm a person of character. And I think we can instill that more by trusting people to be accountable for their own actions more so than punishing them whenever they make a mistake. Explain the mistake. Have them give them some responsibility to their own uh, actions and see what happens. Trust them to be a better person. In that space, it's far more healthy for them to grow into a better person for society. That would be my thoughts. None of us have kids, though, so parents are like, they don't know what they're talking about. But you know what? We have parents. That's I'll right. tell you that. We and have nieces and nephews. Exactly. And you cousins. don't have to be a helicopter pilot <laughs> to look at a helicopter that's upside down in a tree and being like, that shouldn't happen. 
Like <laughs> we can say that, like, I'm not an Olympic runner, but if you finish last, I can tell you, you finished last. I may not be the same boat, but I can tell you who finished last in a hundred meter, hundred meter sprint. Okay, guys. Sorry for that. <laughs> Thank you for the <laughs> comment. Uh, we got uh, two other ones, but they're all my sign language channels, so I appreciate it. Uh, Larry, do you have any comments or anything like that? Anything you want to go? No, with? I was looking through some of my own uh, comments out there, uh, but they're all pretty much around Pascal's wager. Oh, so, what you want Pascal wager something real quick? Um. Well, it's, the main You're thing tired. about Pascal's wager is that it assumes there's one God and it's the mm -hmm. God of the particular religion. Sure. But if you look at it, I mean, if you don't believe in uh, Yahweh or, you, you know, the God of Christianity, you know, you're going to hell. Uh, for, no, the for other religions are saying, no, you got to believe in our God. For our new listeners who are probably listening from the dealership that uh, helped, helped me out yesterday, would you mind explaining what Pascal's wager is? Oh, and it's in a... In a minute, it, I mean, a short version is, uh, why not believe in God anyway? If you're if you're right, you go to heaven. And if right. you're wrong, you go to hell. So you just, yeah. just believe. Just believe. And there's it's so it. many things wrong with that. Can you make yourself believe? Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't believe, can you make? Let's say that it was uh, you're a Christian and the uh, Islamic came to you and said, you, you need to make yourself believe in Allah. Could you just make yourself believe? Right. And mainly it's just a bet to make you say that you believe. Mm. Okay, I believe, but do you really? Right. And if you just said it, wouldn't God know it was a lie? I mean, is he that dumb? Yeah. You know, God so want a lot of people who 16 are 16 things wrong with it, but people use it every day. That's a really good one. Does God want just a bunch of people who are hedging their bets? Or mm -hmm. does he want people who genuinely believe? If he just cares about hedging their bets, is that really the God that's worth worshiping? Likewise, I like to stress something, Riv. I, I'm sure we're on the same page. Intellectual honesty. I right. don't know if a God exists. That's not my problem. That's God's uh, obligation to make himself known to me. He or her or whatever God it is. Yeah. And until that happens, mm -hmm. it's not my problem. So if you want to punish me for that, and forgive me for being intellectually honest. You yeah. know? And well, there's and it totally ignores something outside of the wager altogether. Mm -hmm. What if souls aren't real? <laughs> yeah. we get back we don't soul. you know we oh, never hell. had a soul larry segued to soul again larry without. got it every episode it's okay yeah. it's been 350 no, episodes we, we don't know souls are real but religion sure wants you to think so mm. so they they support that idea and if souls aren't real then none of the religions are good right so i want to uh man that's hard to, it's always hard to segue from souls yeah uh, but <laughs> I want to get back to this list of the things Jesus did that atheists could get behind. And one of the things I really think we should highlight, and this is a bit tongue in cheeky, but I also think it's true. And I'm willing, I'm guys be willing to go out with me on this branch, but we already said traveling is really important because one, you make a lot of friends, you become more tolerant, you, you grow personally. But another thing that Jesus did that I think atheists can get behind is that he really, really loved his stepdad. <laughs> what do I mean? And what do I mean by stepdad? I don't mean Joseph. Joseph's not the stepdad. Listen, my argument is that God is the stepdad. So no shade on stepdads. This, I just want to highlight the first and foremost, like a dad that's willing to come in and like help out and fix the situation, even if you're not biologically related to the kid. That's, that's a cool person in my book. And Jesus really, really loved his stepdad, i.e. God. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, God, through immaculate conception, had Mary give birth to Jesus. So he's not biologically related to Jesus. No more, no more so than Joseph. However, Joseph was there from the manger. He was there day one. He was like, oh, let me get the baby. I'll help you get the baby out. Like, okay, we'll get the baby. I'm going to make sure you're warm. I'm going to make sure that everything's good. We're going to feed it. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to teach this kid to be a carpenter. Okay, we're going to get the skills down. He's going to tell me a bunch of stuff about the Bible. It's like, kid, what are you talking about? I don't understand what you're talking about. I'm going to help you be a carpenter. We're going to get a career. We're going to make your mom happy and proud. I'm going to feed you, clothe you, make sure all this stuff is good in your mind. Please don't run out to the local synagogue and throw the tables over. That's bad. I might want to spank you, but I'm trying to stop telling Stop saying you're the son of God. You're going to make your mother cry. I've been trying to raise you <laughs> right, boy. I'm, make a make a table for crying out loud. I just make a table. We make tables in this family. That's a that's a dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's a guy who was there the entire time. That's a guy. Meanwhile, God's like, oh, what's going on with you? 
I'm just checking in. Are you all right? Okay, cool. See you later. I'm going to kill you when you're like around your 30s. See you later, kid. Uh, here's, here's some magical powers. Make some wine. He drops in like a, like a dead, well, he is not the best father in the world. Let's call him, let's just say it, it is. He's like one of the worst examples of a dad. But what Jesus did was really loved him. Jesus really loved his stepdads. And sometimes stepdads don't get enough love. I'm not saying God deserved the love, but Jesus is a perfect example of a guy who really, really loved his stepdad. Or maybe but he just I loved the mansion that. he lived in. He always talked about the father's <laughs> mansion. <laughs> My dad has our super cool house. <laughs> That's he right. does. He does. He does brag about this. Like, he sounds if you, super if you're cool. good, you can go live there. My dad has I four plan two. stations. <laughs> it's like, Joseph's like, I'm not talking about your dad right now or your stepdad. I'm here. Eat your porridge. It's like, my dad has all the porridge and it's going to be <laughs> the best. And he's so cool. It's like, Jesus, just eat your food and get out of here. Uh, anyway, um, that's well, you know, that? go ahead, go ahead. So there's two things. One anime reference, and it's an old one, but I think it's I think it's suitable. Okay, is that uh, you know you know that table that Stephen Crowder does with whatever changed my mind kind sure. of meme. Sure, sure, right. sure. I've I've seen one that has uh, Piccolo has a little thing from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, it's like Goku is the terrible father changed my mind. There we go. <laughs> Piccolo was the one. Piccolo yes. was the one who was raised and go on the whole time. I, and according to the story, I think that the messenger angel was the father. I mean, whoa, that's that's the one that actually visited Mary. But you know, figure what, it out. Yeah. Okay, okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of oh wow, that's that's some spicy sauce that you just threw in this <laughs> to the mix. Larry, just so you are aware of the reference that went on, there's a show called Dragon Ball Z, it's very, or Dragon Ball, it's very popular. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, there's a character that's the main character whose name is Goku, who just beats up people because he wants to get stronger. Literally, I just explained his entire character dynamic for the really? last few years. Wow. He loves beating up people so he can be stronger. That's it. Just loves fighting. So it became a question of, is he actually a hero? Because he will purposely let villains who are threatening to destroy the entire world go. Multiple times. Just so the villain can get stronger so he can fight him again. Because in his mind, you mm. think, oh, maybe he just wants the villain to stop being evil and just love fighting like him. No, Goku just wants to fight a stronger person so he can get stronger. And so I want to fight him and they're strongest. As the story progresses and it keeps doing the same character beat and arc, you begin to think, is Goku still a good guy? Because he's the <laughs> the earth has been blown up and he's still like, nah, I'll let him I'll let him train a little bit longer. I can't wait till he gets stronger. He's gonna make me so much more stronger as a result. Now Goku has a son. Goku's son is like a regular person. Even though he has his dad's superpowers, he does have like a more regular mindset where he's like Fighting is stupid. I don't like fighting. I'm going to go study and I'm going to be like an engineer. That's what my mom wants to be. To He's do a it. scholar who became a fighter out of necessity. Yeah, but like doesn't like fighting. He's like, ow, that hurts. I don't want to do that. There's easier ways to make money. Like what, what's going on? Like, why are you being evil? Like, please leave my planet. Like, please go away. I don't want to fight you. And as a result of that mindset, Goku doesn't really pay attention to his son as much. <laughs> Again, Goku, not the best dad, but one of the evil characters in the show named Piccolo, who's like this big, bulky, green character, used to yeah. be a guy, said <laughs> like, you know what? I'm going to train Gohan, and I'm going to, I realize he's more peaceful, but I'm going to like, not tell him to be violent, but really just like leverage both mindsets. Like, I'm going to understand this kid. I'm going to let him meditate when he needs to meditate. I'm going to let him do his school and stuff if he needs his school stuff, but he's also going to train. He's going to have a physical regimen. I'm going to teach him how to dodge, which is super important, but I'm also going to <laughs> do basic fighting. And so when the world needs him, when his dad is off trying to cause trouble, we have him. But in the meanwhile, he can still do his own things. And so like the entire show is like, the entire length of Dragon Ball Z is really a, an exploration of Goku being really terrible one-dimensional, but Piccolo rising up to be the father that Gohan needed and like stepping in to the point where when Gohan has the opportunity to choose which clothes he's going to wear when he fights the new bad guy that comes in and he has like a version of like his dad's clothes and or a version of Piccolo's clothes, he chooses Piccolo's clothes. Why? Because in his mindset, and this is like the, the crowning moment of the series is like Piccolo's his dad. Piccolo is the stepdad, like st obviously stepdad, mm. but Gohan loves his stepdad so much that he reps his green alien stepfather more than his actual father 
in fights. Like even right now in yeah. the month, they're fighting mm-hmm. right now, and Gohan's wearing full decked out Piccolo outfit. And it's like you look at that and you can see like good, good job, Gohan. You loved your stepdad. Good job, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really quickly adding to that, uh coming up on the time there was that sure. well, two things. One that has the uh the the guardians of the galaxy when mm-hmm. Yandu is looking down and he's like they replaced the they replaced the, the faces. And they say, you know, he may have been, he may have been your father, but he ain't your daddy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> there's that one, and there's also Vegeta, who has an amazing. I'm I'm torn between Piccolo and Vegeta are my favorite story arcs uh, because Vegeta has this thing where he comes, he's he had a rough childhood, and yeah. it explains why it became the way it did. But he becomes over time like a true father to Trunks, and he's rough on him, but he he's consistent. He takes care of the family. Um, just two amazing stories. None of those is tribe Goku. He just wants to keep on fighting and risking multiple universes so he can fight this front. He's a terrible, terrible father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vegeta actually better dad, which is actually surprising. Yeah. Guys, yeah. I think we're getting close to the bottom of the show. Larry, how much time we got? Um, about nine minutes. We we can do another five anyway. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna do one more terrible dad. Uh, arc if we want to i think we have just enough time for it you riv said you didn't know who was the better dad between vegeta and piccolo my thought process is and i will believe it or not i will tie this back into uh uh, uh religion again but the idea is um death in the dragon ball universe means that you go to basically a vacation in another dimension when you die hfio yeah yeah you basically go to hell which is misspelled or some other dimension, but you never really, you can still come back. You can literally, you can literally sell your mind call, your, your family again. Death has mean so little in the Dragon Ball Z universe. And so I thought to myself, like in the same way, Jesus, death means so little to him because he knows his dad is in heaven or his stepdad's in heaven. He's like, if I die, I'm just going to go see my dad. So in that mindset, I just find it to be, such a cheap magic effect to have Jesus sacrifice himself on a cross because what's what's Jesus's mindset is like, oh yeah, finally I get to go to my dad. Like this kind of hurts, but I'm going to have the most coolest vacation once this is over. Yeah, stab me with that thing. Yeah, blood and water separated. I can't wait. I'm awesome. This is great. See you guys. I don't know why the whole thing wasn't just him smiling and being like, oh, this is going to be so great. Please, please kill me. I can't wait for you to do it because I can't go to heaven if you guys, if I kill myself. So it's it's, it's that weird loophole. So please kill me. I'll tell you, I'll tell you whatever it'll take for you to make that happen. Just hurry this thing up. Um, But honestly, if, if heaven exists and it's just a change of address, as Larry would say, what was that whole sacrifice for? What was that whole human sacrifice for? Because death means so little. Oh, we were doing the black cat. Right. Black cat off. <laughs> black cat off. Yeah. yeah basically. Right all black cats look the same. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, Jesus had a bad weekend for your sins. I know, right? Yeah, I mean, there's no <laughs> such thing as actual death. How could he die for your sins? You know? Exactly. Right? It's literally, it's like the magic trick from God's point of view is, I put a quarter on a table and I put a Dixie cup over the quarter. And I'm like, the quarter's gone. No, it's not. And we're like, oh my God, we got to start a religion by this. This is crazy. Psych. The quarter disappeared, guys. It's like, no, it's, what do you guys talk? Like from his, from God's perspective, he literally just picked his kid up from an Uber. <laughs> 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 Dropped him off at his house for a weekend and then brought him back. It's like, okay, you can go back with your friends. It's like, dad, when can I come back? It's like, We'll talk about it. 2,000 years or something like that. Don't worry about it. It'll be good. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Anyway, not impressed. I am impressed with a lot of stuff that happens in Dragon Ball Z, though. Vegeta, much better representation, actually came back and continued to raise trunks. Um, I'm looking forward to a day where canonically Bra will exist in the new Mm -hmm. universe and that she can potentially be like the number one strongest fighter or person. Cause I think there's a lot of really cool character dynamics, untold stories in Dragon Ball Z that would switch it up. If you had like a brand new kid who was like, I'm evil, <laughs> I'm evil. I'm like my dad and I want to take over the world. Like a Damian Wayne sort of uh, infusion of that character. Like someone that like, I'm not trying to be, I'm not a bad character being good. I'm a character from good that just is, is bent. 
And what are you going to do with that? That might be a really interesting angle. Anyway, that's my takeaway. Riv, anything that you'd like to talk about or plug before we end the show? Oh, the I anime probably related. should have thought about it. Um, uh, I will say I highly recommend, yes, yes, highly recommend watch this new anime. It's based off a manga, but it's kind of a slice of life, but it has some action to it as well. It just My covers all the bases. I like that too, but I'm specifically referring to Free Ren Beyond Journey's End. Um, the Japanese version is, I think, Free Ren, uh, uh, Soso no Free Ren. Um, but there's, there are elements of it that it, yes, it's a compelling story. It's 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 cute. It's has high action in it. It's very you know it's a page turner. It's an episode. You just want to binge it if at all possible. But there are little moments that that talk uh, little moments throughout each episode that really give you pause uh, to reflect and kind of really take it back from all these things that are happening in the world in in that story. All these mm. you know and. Uh, they have moral dilemmas come up and it always comes back to what would him will do? Mm. Um, and then well, what, what is the party faced with now? And it's, it's just, it's such a heartwarming, uh, I can't say enough things about it. Positive. Um, uh, in my motto, I like, I always like to go off with was, um, is, uh, uh it's been a while now. I've, now I've lost track of it, but it's basically think critically, uh, do do well, be healthy, and and think critically, or something like that. So nice, cool. All right. And, and well, Larry, that. uh, my thing would be Freeland, uh, Beyond Journey's End, really good show. Uh, quick synopsis: It's like an elf in a party of other humans and one dwarf, but she lives very. She lives long. It's basically like a person with a very long lifespan who had friends with people who were really who had very short lifespans. And the story takes place after everybody's dead, except oh, for the wow. elf. And so mm-hmm. you think it's sad, but it's really more bittersweet because it, what does a person who has a very long lifespan do and deal with loss and learning from like new interactions, but also mourning the friends that she used to have? Like, it's a really interesting dynamic of that. And it also makes you think of like, you know, how could a God have a meaningful relationship with a human being, right? You know, like in any capacity, right. <clears throat> just on completely different levels. I see an anthill move outside. The discrepancy between my life and an ant's life is is far less compared to myself and a God, right? Yet I'm not hanging around that one ant being like, your name's Jeffrey. I have a mission for you. You're going to be the chosen ant among your people. It's like, no one cares. The ant doesn't care about me. I don't care about the ant. Let's be honest with you. But how does a God have a relationship with a human being? That makes no sense. So in the same capacity, uh, Free One is a good example of someone who does have that empathy to, to actually engage with people. And it makes you realize, man, if you're this caring, why don't I get that from my religious figures, if anything, right? Anyway. Yeah, very good that's a good point I'll let you go. um on my on my side there's a cool new show on netflix that i'd like to recommend it's called resident alien Ooh. it's a it's a comedy um uh, no laugh track or anything it's but it's pretty cool it's very enjoyable i've been binge watching it for the last couple of days uh resident alien on netflix oh uh, you can find go ahead what is it about about an alien that comes to destroy everybody on earth but his hit his ship gets hit by lightning and he crashes and then he's got to blend in, and the comedy ensues. Hit that oh, way. is that Wash? It is Wash. It's from it's the guy from Firefly. If anyone wants to know who it's so- Alan Tudyk. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the guy yeah. from Wash from Firefly. I might watch yeah. it. I yeah. love. Oh, that it's guy. really Dungeon. good. I yeah. bet he has a Excellent. great voice. I bet the the alien has a really cool yeah. voice. Uh, yeah. He's a great voice actor too. Anyway, yeah, right. awesome. Well, we're down at the bottom of the show, or top of the show, I guess I should say. Uh, you can find this show on podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we see you next Wednesday night here on WOZO Radio at 7 o'clock. Say bye, everybody. Uh, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.
Good show, everybody.